All right, guys, welcome back to All Things Outdoors. Today we're out here at the Chesapeake Bay Foundation headquarters area. And also, please be sure to watch this video till the end. And also, please be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. And be sure to put that down in the comments below so you did that for a shout out. And yeah, without further ado, let's get started. So we're gonna be going around the CBS and we're gonna be showing you kind of the area and we're gonna be showing you some of the cool, you know, plants and, and stuff like that. Plants and geographical features around here. So yeah, pretty cool. I'm actually on my bike right now. So if there's shaky video, I apologize. yeah pretty nice day out very nice not too hot not too cold you know oh look we got a cardinal over there i don't know if you can see him but you know he was down there pretty cool love cardinals they're so beautiful lovely red birds I'm just gonna do this part on my bike and then we're gonna get off there's quite a few cool plants that i'm gonna show you but first I want to show you this. So this is the bee bulb, and look at that. Look at how it turns the entire meadow purple. Isn't that beautiful? It's lovely, and look at the bees. There's a bee over there, bee, another bee over there. They're everywhere. They're all over this stuff. They love it. Definitely would bring lots of color to your garden. Love it. So beautiful. Absolutely love this stuff. It's incredible. It's just a lovely day out, too. So yeah, just a nice day, you know, like being out here. And this is the green ash right here. So we're going to go and take a look at it. And also we have a little friend with us right here. Always making noise. Do you hear that? Oh, that's lovely. Yeah. Little periodical cicada. Can you hear him make a noise? That is so cool. Yeah, so this is the periodical cicada, native to a good part of Eastern North America. These guys live to get pretty. These guys actually, wow, just listen to him. He is screaming. Not really, he's just making noise. These guys do that a lot. Let's set him back on his branch. Whoop. Yep. They actually fly pretty good it's right down there yeah anyway yeah native to eastern north america these guys are so beneficial and they're so cool lots of animals eat them for food and uh they only come out once every 17 years so yeah pretty cool spectacle can't really hear them now they kind of stop at this time of day kind of getting close to sunset so they, they only make noise during the bay or during the day not during the bay <laughs> so this is the green ash it's native to basically the entire eastern half of North America, south to Florida, and they can grow as far north as Nova Scotia in Canada. They can grow uh, as far west as uh, Texas and Oklahoma, so very wide-ranging tree. Um, and they get to be around, I would say they get to be around, uh, get to be around like, you know, uh, 7,500 feet tall around that, around that time, around that kind of size, you know. Basically, medium to large tree, not like not super large, like not like an oak, but like pretty big, good size. So you can tell what it is. It's kind of on the younger trees. I've never seen a really old one, but they kind of got this smooth bark, and they have these nice branches with very tall, with very good sized leaves. Like these are the leaves, and they generally have around. See, this one has. Oh wow, look at this. So the leaflets are arranged in parallel rows, which is kind of unusual, actually. Or no, they're not, actually. This was just a really weird leaf. So this one didn't grow right. There should be another leaflet right here, but there isn't. And there's no evidence of it being broken off, so that's interesting. Yeah, if you look here, they have parallel rows, until, and there's one at the end. But yeah, they, they usually get to be around seven leaflets, I would say. Seven to... Eh, seven leaflets, I would say, around that. Yeah, pretty cool. Uh, these are a native tree here, and they are 
uh, this one's pretty healthy actually and they grow pretty quickly they can grow as much as two feet a year so yeah pretty fast growing tree um and these are great shade tree and their ash is and the ash green ash wood is also very desirable for making specialty items like baseball bats and tool handles so pretty and but it's not as desirable as the white ash now unfortunately both green and white ashes which we don't have any white ash here i don't see any um but you know white ash is more desirable than the green ash for wood but also this is a very desirable wood tree for wood and it's a lovely shade tree and it is often planted in cities along roadsides and in yards and gardens for a shade tree and they have very nice wood and the wood and unfortunately both ash both green and white ash have been threatened by the emerald ash boring beetle a beetle from asia they uh they burrow into these ash trees and they just kind of start eating it like they basically start like munching on the wood they eat wood and it's just killing these at an incredible rate and unfortunately there really aren't a whole lot of them left in the on the eastern in eastern north america there really aren't that many of them left unfortunately but they're, they're starting to make a comeback so yeah they're starting to make a comeback they're coming back now this one's very healthy looking very nice uh probably about eight, eight nine feet tall something like that yeah it's very healthy too growing pretty good i remember when we first saw this tree it was about three feet shorter than this when i first came here at least when I came, well, I don't know if it was the first time I came here. Probably not, but it was uh, uh, it was about two years ago. It's about this. It was about three feet shorter than this, so it's it's more like four or five feet shorter actually. It, it really grew a lot, so very nice, healthy tree. Yeah, that's about it for the green ash. And we'll also show you this the northern bayberry bush. So this is a shrub native to basically the east coast, you know, kind of, they like maritime. Oh, look at this. Here we have another cicada. They're pretty cool. Look at that. The red eyes. It's just incredible. Yeah, so this is the northern bayberry. And they get, they're, they're a small, sh they're a shrub to small tree. And you can kind of tell what they are because they are this very dense shrub. Like, they're very dense. They're a lot more dense than most other shrubs, especially a lot denser than native most of the native shrubs here but yeah pretty cool and they are and you can also tell by the leaves because they have this very round leaves and in the summertime they have these little berries these are green right now but they will turn blue we'll show you that later in the summer so they start to turn blue and they are called and this is actually used as a spice <gasps> look at that it's a, just i just saw this right there look at that it's a tiny praying mantis that is so cool. I love praying mantis. Can you see him in there? You can see him in the camera, let me know. So cool. I think he might be a native one. Yeah, but that is so tiny. Thought it was kind of a fly when I saw it, but then I looked closer and I saw that it was a praying mantis. Yeah, that's really cool. These guys are actually very intelligent. It may be a native one. It could also be the Chinese ones, which are huge. We'll see. If, if we find one later in the summer, we'll definitely show you because they are so cool. Um, but, yeah, this is, if it's a native one, then, yeah. But if they're Chinese ones, the Chinese ones are usually green or brown. And they come here from, and they were from China. And they're really cool still. And these guys are actually incredibly intelligent, praying mantis. They're so intelligent as they can, um, they can actually see very well. They have some of the best vision of almost all of a lot of insects. They have some of the best vision and they're just very, they have, are very intelligent and they are so good at hunting and camouflaging. So yeah, very cool. Yeah. Anyway, back to Northern Bayberry. So this is the Northern Bayberry. Yeah. And you can tell what it is because it's got these round leaves which are bright green. And cool thing about the northern bayberry is if you crush some of the leaves like this, they actually have a very nice smell to them. And I think there might be uh, northern bayberry scented like essential oils. And this is also used in a spice in some cooking, in some uh, foods, in some different types of food. Um, and yeah, that's about it for the northern bayberry. It's just a beautiful shrub though. So yeah, that's about it for the northern bayberry.
All right, so now we're here on a different part of the beach. Pretty cool. Yeah, so we're out here. And look at that, there's actually geese over there with goslings. We're not gonna get close because they might attack us if we get too close, but you can see, I zoomed in on the camera here, you can see that they're in there. There's the goslings, they're the little ones, and then there's the adult geese. And you cannot, and there's actually another group of goslings that are older, right next to that goose. Oh, one of them's moving. See that? So cool. Oh, we got another bird on there, crow. I wonder if the geese will do anything. Don't think they will. Oh, there's another gosling going down to the water. Yeah, I love, they're so cute. They're really cute, beautiful. And we're not gonna get close because it, when they have eggs or when they have goslings, they will actually, they can, if you get too close, they might actually attack you because they're trying to protect their babies, you know, or their goslings, so yeah. And here, we're gonna zoom back out again. You can see we have eastern prickly pears here. So this is eastern prickly pear, and they are a native species, native to, and they can grow basically all throughout North, good part. They can, they grow like all throughout the United States. Right now it's blooming, as you can see. Beautiful flowers. Last year it didn't bloom as much, but this year it really bloomed a lot. And these like to grow in sandy, they like to grow in well-drained soil, that has lots of sun so like on a beach we're on a beach here so it likes that and it gets plenty of sun it gets all the morning sun and midday sun so it gets a lot of sun and you can actually see and these are also called low prickly pears because they don't really grow too much taller than this it's about as tall as they get they don't really get super tall i think they can get a little bit taller than this but not a whole lot taller that's about as tall as they get they, they can get to be up to three feet tall, I think. These ones are about a foot. Yeah, and you can see we have old pads down there. So these are these little stem pieces are actually called pads. And these are actually one of the couple of cactus species that you can touch. Now these little spots here, don't touch those because those are the parts that have the spikes. If you touch in between the spikes, you can feel very waxy, kind of firm feeling to it. And the flowers you can touch. Very pretty. Wonder if they smell. I don't know yet. And they don't really have much of an odor to them, but you know, they're still very pretty. These will later make fruits. You can see there's some fruits from the last year, little purple fruits. And these actually flatten out in the fall and winter time. They flatten out. They just like you know fall over kind of. And then when it starts to get warm again, they just perk right back up again. See, these are actually a couple year old pads. You can see these bright green ones with the little caps over the spikes. Those are new ones. And there's a pad below it, and there's a pad below that. And each pad, the pad, higher up pads, are one year older than the one below. So yeah. And these can grow in sandy soil, and they like well-drained soil. And you can actually transplant this. We're not gonna do it today, but maybe another day because we don't want to do it when it's blooming because when it's blooming it takes a lot of energy to bloom and if we were to try and you know transplant a cactus now it probably wouldn't do so well because the blooms would be using so much energy it just exhausts the plant oh there's more geese over there anyway we're just gonna take a look here and you can actually so what you do is you would cut see where the pads connect you would cut a couple pads, like you can cut a couple of them on the same branch. Like see this big pad at the bottom? You'd wanna cut that entire thing. And then you would stick it in the soil after, you wanna let it like have a callus over it. But once it starts to, you know, like, starts to scar over, that's when, and then you take it and then you put it in a pot with uh, good well-drained soil and put it in the sun. And then after a little while, it'll start to grow roots and you'll have a new cactus. Pretty cool. So these are actually used in ornamental purposes, and they and they go good in pots. Yeah, that's about it for the prickly pear cactus. All right, so this is the yucca uh, right here, and you can see it has these lovely, this lovely flower spike, and it's getting ready to bloom. We'll show you when it's in full bloom. And there's another one over there. This is my, this is our neighborhood pool, but I'm not gonna go in because I don't really want to go to the pool yet. 
I'm not going to go to the pool today, but anyway, we can still show the yucca. So this is yucca. The other ones down there don't have flower spikes yet, but this one does, so yeah. They almost look like giant asparagus, but sort of. And they, these are um, a wonderful plant for the garden. Um, and these are actually uh, a very a highly prized ornamental species for their lovely flowers. And these attract hummingbirds and sometimes orioles will come too. And many other birds will come too. They're a bird magnet and they are pretty cool. And we'll show you a bigger yucca so you can, you know, get closer and go into more detail with it. Just wanted to show you the flower spike there. Boat. There's a bug. Anyway, so this is a yucca. Once again. Uh, pretty big. And these can... They, this is about... They, I mean, they get a little bit taller than this. This is, a, this is a bunch of them. Pretty close together. And you can tell what they are because they got these long sword-shaped leaves. They're very leathery feeling. They have these little strings that kind of come off of them. And they're also called Adam's Needle because they actually have spikes on the end. Uh, they're also called needle palms, but these are not a species of palm. They are yuccas. Uh, they are a great choice in the garden if you want uh, to have, you know, like a, a bird-friendly garden and you have kind of an arid climate, and they grow in hot areas all over America. And there's over 50 different species of them. And they, and this is the Adam's needle, yucca. Uh, and this is about, I mean, they can grow to be pretty tall, actually. They get to be pretty tall. And there's other different types of yuccas, like the Joshua tree, which is used by birds year-round for shelter and for food sources. And the birds will eat the seeds and stuff like that. And they sometimes will tear off long strips of the leaves to use for nests. And we'll show you that because, look, the leaf doesn't actually break. Like, you know, pull it and then, you know, that's a new leaf. So it comes off right at the base. But with an older leaf, see like this, you know, it doesn't really just tear right down the side. It actually rips vertically see that so they will, the birds will tear off long strips of the leaf and this is not harming the plant these are the old leaves these will die soon anyway which will be replaced by these new leaves and they will and these will bloom and make little fruits after a while pretty cool um and they are a prized ornamental for many garden lovers who want to create a you know a uh, like a bird friendly garden but in a uh, arid climate so yeah, very important for birds and many other animals like this plant. I like it too, it's very pretty. It gives it, it makes everything look like it, it makes it look, give, it gives your garden a nice deserty feel if you wanna plant this in your garden. Highly suggest it, it's a lovely plant. And the flowers are beautiful. And I believe you can, and this species of yucca is toxic, but you can eat certain types of yucca. You can steam, you can cook the fruits up and you can eat them. Yeah, pretty cool, but this is toxic, so don't eat this kind of yucca. Don't eat Adam's needle yuccas. So yeah, it's pretty cool. And we'll do a quick little segment on milkweed, because I like milkweed a lot. So this is milkweed. You can tell what it is, because it's kind of got this long stem, and it's very tall, and it has these nice leaves with very uh, nicely aligned veins. They're not parallel, they are alternate. And if you pick one of the leaves off, this milky white sap comes out, which is toxic. Only if you only if you eat it, you can touch it. See, you can touch it, uh, and it doesn't do anything. Up, oh, and the ants seem to like it. Yeah, and it and the these are the flower buds. We'll show you what the flowers look like once they grow. They're very oh, there's like a must be a spider living in there. It's cool. This is very nice. These are got lots of new leaves. Very healthy plant in general. Lots of nice flowers. Be be very pretty once it, you know, starts to make blooms. And we'll show you that when it's blooming because it's 
absolutely gorgeous. And the butterflies, monarch butterflies, this is the only plant that monarch butterflies will eat. So if you have some of this growing in your yard, do not remove it, keep it. It's very useful for monarch butterfly habitat. It's the only plant that they will eat. They will also eat butterfly weed, uh, but they like milkweed more, so. And, and uh, it's pretty iconic plant, beautiful. Uh, purple flowers so we'll definitely be sure to show you those they're very pretty and they are just a lovely plant in general and the butterflies love them so yeah definitely suggest planting this stuff very pretty i love it i love it it's just so pretty it's this lovely stem it's very tall and straight it gets me around it's actually a pretty tall plant these ones get very tall here so pretty cool but yeah i mean going to be about all for today's video so you know once again be sure to like subscribe and turn on notifications and put that down in the comments below saying that you did that for a shout out and we will see you guys on the next adventure